Okay guys, this is the wall we're doing today. This is uh, a repair. They put three new windows in and they decided to use wood, wood trim around the top and the side. So we're just doing this section here. It's open stud construction, but I have line wire behind there. There's insulation giving it support. I've got plenty of material to do this on the truck. I stopped by Home Depot today and picked up the rest of it, just in case I'm gonna need more material to do this. It's really just, it's a three coat system. And uh, we're gonna go outside right now and uh, and start mixing. So here we go. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, so today we're just using sand and cement. We're mixing our own. Uh, JR, pan the camera over here. You see, we've got uh, we got some we got some backup material in case we need it. Base catch it. But this is some leftover sand that we have from a job, and I'm trying to clean out my truck. You know, to get to get it clean. You know, it's been it's been sitting with sand so long. And, and other stuff throughout the winter. So we have some uh, cement left over from our last job. Um, we broke it down and put it into some buckets. This is just Riverside plastic cement. Ooh, stand back and don't breathe that. Whoa. Um, Okay, so I, I don't have my mask. If I had a mask right here, I would be wearing a mask. I would have to pick up a mask. So you can put this in your bucket and mix it in a bucket, but I like to I like to get a wheelbarrow and dry mix it in a wheelbarrow first you get it mixed up really good together because if you just uh, if you just pour it into a bucket it doesn't mix very well So this is basically the same material as we got here in these pre-mixed bags. Um, so what we're also gonna do is, at one point today, we're gonna put some of this glue in. Uh, this is just formerly Acryl 60. You can use Acryl 60. It's really thin, a thin white glue that you use uh, as an admix. It's really hard to roll this on. You don't wanna roll this on anything. It's, this is so, the stucco bonds to the edges of the repair um, and outside of the edges where you're going to be feathering it in for the texture. Uh, now this is this is something we're going to be adding today too. Uh, this is a uh, rapid set mortar mix high strength structural repair mortar and they're not kidding if you want your stucco to have high strength this is high strength structural repair. So we're going to put a little bit of this in and uh, give it some strength and uh, you can actually use this material here straight but I wouldn't recommend it um, I have used it straight for small projects but I always mix it with some regular cement too um, it's just weird it acts weird if you try to use it straight without mixing it with with a, an, a, a byproduct okay so um, so after we get it mixed up here in the wheelbarrow we're going to uh, we're gonna now we're gonna add now we're gonna start putting it in the buckets. So let me get the drill. Put the drill in there first because it's kind of hard to put the drill down into it later. I'll sit that there like that. Okay. And now. Now we can put it in the bucket. It's good to know this system here because a lot of times, well, not a lot of times, I guess, 
but sometimes you can go into the material yard and they won't have they're not going to have the pre-mixed stucco so you're going to have to mix mix it by yourself I'm going to put one more in. I'm going to save a little bit of room for the ad mix here, the, uh, the ad mix and the mortar mix. There. That's good for one bucket. I'm going to mix up a couple buckets. We're going to mix up a couple buckets. A leaf. That's good for one bucket. Now we're going to mix up another bucket. Another bucket. This is just to get started. About 63 right now. 63 degrees. All right, that's good for starting out. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take these buckets back there. And then we're going to add the hot stuff so we don't have to hurry. It'll be right there and ready to go. Um, but that's how I'm going to get them out there, I think. I guess I could just carry them. Huh? Mm. I just don't want to pick them up and take them out of the, out of the wheelbarrow. I just don't want to pick them up and take them out of the wheelbarrow. That's the lazy part of me. I have a tendency to do things unorthodox a lot. But after I've been doing this, you know, after you do this for 30 years, you know, it's just kind of, you kind of figure things out. You're always figuring out. You're always learning in this trade. Okay. Here we go. So I need a little bit more water, but instead of using water, I'm going to use some of the white glue. The Acro 60. Oh, here we go. So it's just about a cup of white glue per bucket. You can smell it too. Oh, I love the smell of white glue. Take me back. You know, my childhood days. <laughs> Thin, but um, you know this stuff takes up really fast. Do we have that other half a bag here, or is that it? That's the that other. was the, that was That's the other the bag one. I just used. Okay, yeah. then, then what you we may want go to get do, the other one. Uh, no, that's okay. I can save that for the next one. Well, we just want to add a little bit more sand, and cement, the combo. That's the ideal thing about bringing a, bringing the wheelbarrow back is you have more sand with you. The formerly Aqua 60. Okay. So much for that. Put the lid on it. Keep it clean. 
Okay. So, looks like I'm gonna have to take one of these buckets out right now because I have to get yep. more sand. Okay. Okay, let's try it out. Okay, it's still a little loose. So, I'm gonna have to take this out of here now. Take it out. Although that high strength mortar mix takes up fast, it's not gonna take up fast enough for this. So, we need to add a little bit more here. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. for next time okay now um <laughs> you got me going in circles never fails every time i go to make a video there's always airplanes or trains or somebody washing their car with an electric power washer uh street cleaner what else uh anything loud to it wants to inter interrupt my videos <laughs> All right, guys, so now the moment of truth, huh? How good is the mud? Now, I think the mud is gonna be pretty good. I don't have my gloves, but I'm not gonna worry about it. All right. You know, what I would like to do is cover that light box right there, though. Uh, JR, I wonder if you can run. Sure. Get this some tape, tape on it. Maybe this. cover this guy up here keep it clean now we have to plaster around it too it looks like a little bit I'm not that messy really this is just a precaution precaution okay so I found a glove Jared went and got the silver tape god bless him all right <laughs> He cares just as much about the product as I do. All right, here we go. And the mud should be taking up a little bit. And it is. I can feel it's taking up a little bit with the high strength mortar mix by Rapid Set. Okay. So you also want to wear your glasses on the scratch coat, especially because this wire will flick mud back in your eye. So also, 
before you guys begin a job of plastering, make sure that you take a brush and clean out any loose debris that's down in that crack. You know, so you get a nice good seal. You know, and everything it says, everything you read that has to do with adhesives, the surface must be clean and dry and free of foreign elements. Okay. So over here too. make sure that your wire is below your screeds. see how our mud is doing after all that it's still alive come on over here JR and then uh, we'll do this corner first make sure all your wires are down from the lather a lot of time lathers in a hurry to get out of there they don't you know, they don't worry too much about the wires sticking out their job is mainly to waterproof it get the wire on but a good lather a good lather you don't have to do anything to it when you get there good lathers are hard to find and nowadays even bad lathers are hard to find who wants to be a bad lather i don't i don't want to be a bad lather i don't want to be a good lather okay so, uh, I mean, I could mask that off, but I think I'll just come out at a different angle. Now, I'm just... Okay, I'm just All right. Let me get some mud on that hawk. All right, here we go. Nice laughing. Nice laughing job. I really gotta get a new pair of boots. Look at that. Look at that big old hole down there. I gotta order some new boots today. Maybe with the money I get from this job, I'll be able to afford a pair. Okay. Then push, push that mud. Into the joint. I know there's a lot of competition out there watching right now. And that's okay, you know. That's okay. Probably got something wise to say. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm just crossing, just like you guys. Huh? I'm, uh, much more than just a plaster. I'm a plaster, I'm a lather, I'm a hog carrier, I'm a business owner, I'm a labor guy, all of the above. I wear many hats. Yeah, let's get a shot up underneath here. See how we want to fill that in up there. Sometimes just take your finger and do it if you can't get it any other way. You guys are probably saying, this guy's slow. What's the hurry? Huh? What is the hurry? Well, well yeah, I just remember we've got to get to another job. <laughs> Okay. 
Uh, let's go around the corner over here, JR, and pick this corner up here. You gotta keep on, keep on, keep on. Fill that up up there, you're gonna have a problem on brown coat. You know, you gotta get it on the scratch coat. Most of it anyway. It takes years to be able to learn how to do this. This isn't something, if you are a homeowner, if you are a homeowner, and you're looking to do a patch on your house, I might make this look easy, okay? But it, take, take, it takes years to learn how to do this. I was on I was on our crew, we did track homes. For seven years, I did track homes. Day after day after day, nothing but doing the same thing over and over and over again. That's why some of my movements might look casual and fluid. So, I'm just used, so used to doing this. This is, I've done this for more years than not. I did a lot. Okay, I'm 62, so I've been doing this for 33 years more years than not. So, I remember I was going to quit doing this because it was so hard. Not necessarily this, this coat here. I was doing, I was doing the, uh, the brown coat. I was doing the brown coat and I couldn't get it to sit flat because the company I was with, they didn't even use Darby's. They just troweled it on as nice as they could and, and then they floated it. So, <laughs> then I went to another company. I mean, we took, we had to take our Darbys around with us wherever we went. When I worked on that crew, we had to carry our Darbys in case the boss came around. You know what the boss saying? Where's your Darby? All right, about done with this first pail. Catch that. <laughs> well, look, the hammer went right in the bag. <laughs> oh. All right, moving on down the line. Okay, for the sake of power on our camera, I want to show you the next step here. Then we're going to give the camera a break, and throw it back on the charger, so that we have enough juice to film the second pass. Okay, so we're going to lay everything down as good as we can. And then Take our scratcher, a clean scratcher. Put a little water on there. Put a little water on your scratcher. It helps keep it clean. Okay, and then we just wanna we wanna go about a you know an eighth to a quarter of an inch deep. No more, no less, you know. That that's good right there. That's fine. A little deeper right here, okay, you see all that? A little deeper here than I like to see. But it's okay. 
just don't want to go like this. You don't. Want... Okay, that's the wrong way to do it. Okay, that's the wrong way to do it. Okay. So, but we can fix it. We can fix it. Okay, just do that and hit it again. Okay. All right. So then, after you're done with that, then you can take your sponge float, go around the edges, and clean up the edges. Make sure you got mud in those little pockets right there. Okay. Then okay, we're going to pull that mud up into the joint. We're going to clean up that edge right there. And pull that down into that little hole right there. And clean this up. Okay. Getting this ready for the second coat. Okay. And that's it. So. So it's like two buckets, right? Yeah. It's going to take another two buckets. There'll be two more. Uh-oh. This not pretty good. Where is the plug in? Right here? Yeah, I think so. Yep. Yeah. Where's the uh, the little bag? Here we go. Put some of this in there first. See what happens. noises you make <laughs> all right you ready okay guys here we go we've got the scratch coat on already and now we've mixed up our second uh our second uh set of buckets okay our second set of buckets and the recipe we use is the same recipe same formula as we used the first time except for you know what we usually don't uh, put the rapid set in the second coat but we may not we might not have got enough in the first coat it's starting to take up quite a bit there but uh, see how i can still leave an impression you can still see the wall move a little bit we're putting on more rapid set in the second coat uh, to help that firm up okay so here we go got a really nice batch of mud going here this has the hot stuff in it so this should go off uh probably uh, I'm gonna say in 20 minutes. We got about 20 minutes of working time with this mud, so pretty casual, pretty laid back here. We're not in an, an extreme hurry to get this on, so we're good. We're comfortable. It looks like the scratch coat. The scratch coat is accepting the brown coat nicely. Okay. So working in this corner over here. I'm just really lightly, lightly putting mud on that corner right now. All right, so I'll let that take up a little bit. 
just really lightly putting a lot of mud on it right now. Then I'll screed off the fat. Okay. Work his top here. A lot of times you can take a derby you know, or a, a rod and rod this wall here. Back in a minute, I'm going to go get mine out of the truck and I'm going to do that. So now, I can just get this kind of close with still leaving a, enough fat on there to scrape off. Okay, now I'm going to go grab my rod, and I'm going to darby that piece. Now, okay guys, so I went and grabbed my darby, so I'm going to make this nice here. And I noticed uh, while you guys were gone that uh, this was a little bit low, and low, it wasn't, wasn't filled out enough, so I filled that in right here. I just pulled the mud up with my, with my, with my trowel. Let me, let me show you how I did that to uh, fill that in at the top. So if it's too low, we can, I was plastering like this. I was coming up underneath it. And you know what? Most of you guys probably don't even plaster like that. Most of you guys probably plaster like this. You probably pull it up like that. So that's what I did to uh, bring that out a little bit at the top. That's it. Otherwise, other than that, other than that, this is working very smoothly. Okay, we got just enough hot stuff in it. We've got plenty of glue. We don't have to worry about it sticking. And I'm just leveling this out right now to get ready to put that Darby on. And let me just show you how, it, how that Darby is going to work over here. I'll do this piece first. So that's about it with this. Okay, I'll wash this off. Keep it clean for next time. And then what we'll do, after this takes up a little bit more, we can screen our edges like this. Make that uniform across the top. And the same thing on the bottom. You can see that's pretty straight right there. So we want to keep that all the way up here. Continue that all the way over and around. A little bit more dry right here because that was just the finished plaster had scraped off right there, so it's a little more dry right there. Okay, so side here. Then we're gonna float that in about 10 minutes, just take up enough, or at least get it. So just put a, just trim it out like this. Okay, if nothing else, at least trim it out. If you're not gonna float it. I still have to do this light box here, so I can do that right now. We gotta get that that patch too. What? Right around the corner. Oh yeah, we gotta get that patch around the corner too. Okay, so we're gonna get this right here. Watch this. Get that right there. Okay. All right. 
So um, we're gonna go ahead and finish plastering this and then uh, we're going to uh, say goodbye and see you on the next one. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today we have impending rain and I'm going over here to do the finished stucco on the patch that we did the scratch and brown coat on yesterday. Now, it's been uh, 10 years since I had stucco wash off the wall because of weather. And that was acrylic. Acrylic doesn't dry when it gets cold. It wasn't supposed to rain for 48 hours and it was a Saturday and I grabbed my crew and we went out to the job in Sonoma and we finished the, this big front gable in the front of this million dollar home and it rained on Sunday night and the material didn't dry, it washed off the wall. And we had to put on two coats of BTS to smooth it out after that, you know, after the weather became a little bit more agreeable with us. So one coat wasn't enough of the BTS because you could still see the trail marks from where the water took the stucco and ran down the wall. You know, the, the stucco doesn't just all come off. It comes off in sections and pieces like you squirt, you squirt the wall with water and it leaves trail marks from where the water and stucco run off. And uh, you can't you can't fix that. It's not as easy to fix as it seems. Uh, like I said, we did we had to put two coats on because one coat of skim coat wasn't enough. We had to double up on it, and that's the only way you can fix those. And you learn to respect your acrylic stucco after something like that that costs you hundred hundreds of dollars to fix. So, but I'm not worried today because number one, this is a small job. Um, it's uh, 11, it's, it's almost 11 o'clock and the heavy rain isn't coming until four o'clock today. But uh, also I have a arsenal of material that I plan on using. I have some rapid set that I'm gonna use for the first time ever. I'm gonna put some accelerator in my finish coat because, uh, well, I need to speed up the drying time and it's gonna be painted anyway. So I'm not, I'm not worried uh, too much. I have a heat gun with me. Plus I have some uh, Acryl 60, and Acryl 60 will speed the drying time. And I'm really confident about this, no worries. Um, I mean, if if it came down to it, I've got plastic and tape, I could, I could tape around the repair. But uh, I'll check in with you in a little bit and we'll see how it goes. It's starting to rain already a little bit. You can see the drops on my windshield here. Let me turn on my wipers. So see, it's not raining too hard. It's not raining at all right now, but it was raining about 20 seconds ago. So it's intermittent right now. And it's gonna be that way for a few hours. This is the house right here. Okay guys, I just now finished the patch. I was gonna do a video before I started, but it had already started to rain. So I figured I better jump on it before it starts raining too hard and at least make sure I get this job because uh, 
there was a moment there was where I was questioning doing it or not. It was raining uh, pretty heavy drops, but I had already put water in the material, you know, in the bucket. So I kind of had to do it. It was basically shit or get. So, <laughs> so I took a shit and uh, I've already got it done here. So uh, I, have, I just got done cleaning up my tools and uh, here it is. So I use this product here, rapid set. This is what we normally use on the scratch and brown coats. But uh, I figured today I better use it because of the impending rain so and it seems to be working really good you know this has to be painted anyway uh, so you know the color isn't gonna matter on this one but if it had paint in it if it had color in it then I was gonna have to wait but most of these little jobs here they're just getting painted so uh, here's the Acro 60 it's called Master Imaco A660 formerly Acro 60 this was $125 in 2023 um, so I use some of this quite a bit of it actually I use probably two cups two cups of this in a five gallon pail uh, three quarters full uh, with a probably a one-to-one -one mix with the rapid set high strength mortar and the finished coat the finished stucco that we used the uh, 1620 base 2 uh, from Omega but uh, anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a heat gun and I'm gonna put some heat on this to expedite the drying because you know, they, they say it's going to be raining. It's not raining anything right now, but I am going to grab the heat gun and uh, put a little heat on it. All right, guys, here it is. I got my heat gun out. <laughs> Putting a little heat on this wall to expedite the drying time just to be sure that it's going to dry before it starts to rain. Once it starts raining, it's not going to quit for four days, and the owners would like to get this done. <laughs> so I'm trying to oblige them. And it's going to be okay. I got my hot stuff in. I have glue, which is going to expedite the drying. This is going to dry in no time. Look at that. That's pretty hot. I don't want to get it too close to my phone. It might melt it. Uh, well, I got my rapid strength, high, high strength, rapid set high strength motor. And I have my Aqua 60. Plus I got my heat gun out. These heat guns are nice to bring out on a cold winter's day, you know, when you don't want to get out of your truck. Just break out your heat gun, warms your hands up a little bit. This is going to dry in no time like this. i got 100% confidence that this wall is going to be okay. Mother Nature is being nice to me today. I didn't even know I was going to work, but since we had a window of opportunity to get in here, the rain's not coming in until later tonight actually three o'clock so it's already probably 12 30 now we've got a couple more hours but like i said it started dropping heavy drops a while ago there were some big drops of rain i was questioning doing this or not but i already had the mud you know the, the powder was in the bucket and it had water in it so I went ahead and stung it. I went ahead and did it. Looks like everything's going to be okay. 